Help! My marriage is in trouble. What can I do? Hi, welcome to today's little lesson, and thank you so very much for joining once again here on my back porch. In our previous two little lessons, we've been talking on the subject of marriage, uh, starting off with a question that one of our readers, or one of our readers, one of, one of our viewers, asked us about submission, wives to their husbands. We talked about that two little lessons ago. And then our last lesson, I talked about 14 magic words <laughs> that can repair, fix, upgrade, enhance your marriage. So if you miss those two little lessons, I just encourage you to go back and watch them, find them. Um, and, and as I'm filming this, I happen to know that this little lesson is going to be published on a Friday. So we do these on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays if I have time. And uh, so I happen to know that this one will be aired on a Friday. So it's been kind of like marriage week here on Little Lessons. And I've been married for 42 years. So it's, you know, obviously... Um, you know, something must be going well, <laughs> and it has gone very well. Um, I'm so thankful for my beloved, dear, precious, special wife, the woman that God gave me 42 years ago. Um, you know, and, and to her credit, uh, has a lot to do with her, of course, obviously I've played a part, but... Um, we're still together and still deeply in love. And it's, it, it, you know, the future is looking bright. And, and I recognize that had I not married uh, the woman that I did marry, that I, 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 it may not have had such a happy ending. And, and so, therefore, I have just the utmost uh, consideration, um, you know, mercy towards people whose marriages have not worked out. You know, there's always two sides to every story. Um, you know, some people say, you know, that's why God gave us two ears, so we could hear both sides of every story. And too often Christians rush to judgment about, you know, people whose marriages haven't worked out. And... I just want to start this little lesson by saying that we need to be very, very, very careful in passing judgment on, 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 on any situation in, in which there could be facts, relevant facts, that we know nothing about. Uh, and, uh, and most times we, there are relevant facts that we know nothing about because prudent people don't blab their stuff all over the world and and they you know keep some things private and so you you don't know the whole story um and, and you know so let's not be so quick to point our finger at people whose marriages have failed and 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 i, I don't know where you stand on the whole spectrum of of remarriage i'm i i'm uh, you know taking the whole bible into consideration i'm i'm you know, i lean to uh, some degree of grace that, you know, divorce is not the unpardonable sin that, that brands you, you know, and you, 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 it's, you know, you never get a second chance on this one, even though God has demonstrated, you know, repeatedly throughout scripture that, that he's just gracious to the heavens. And, um, and when you look at the whole scripture, even when you take the specific scriptures on divorce and remarriage, and not just take out one scripture and say, well, this is what the Bible says, you know, but looking contextually at everything, I, I think that there certainly is some room for God to bless a remarriage. And again, I know that there are going to be people who are going to write all kind of comments here. Just save your time. Don't waste your time. Okay, you, you know, just go do something else. You know, um, who, you know, well, you're in God's eyes, you're still married, you know, just because you got, oh, my goodness, you know, and I, I've actually done little lessons on that subject at other times in the past. And, and uh, you know, lots of people disagree with me and so forth. And, and, and I love you and that's OK, but I'm just not here to, 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 to argue. Some people are so obnoxious about this subject that one guy heard. I thought this was a, a brilliant comment. He said, even if I'm wrong, he said, I'd rather go to hell 
than be with your kind of people in heaven. <laughs> Because <laughs> they were telling you're going to hell because that, you know well, here's what you teach you know it's too much grace about remarriage and he said I'd rather go to hell than be with you in heaven and that, and I can I can certainly relate to that because some people get so obnoxious about it and they don't consider any context at all uh, simply on the, the the words of Christ on this regard on this mar- on, 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 on remarriage. So anyways, without going into details about that, I'm here to try to help you before you get a divorce. And, you know, I titled this little lesson, Help, you know, my marriage is in trouble, what can I do? Well, you know, you're still, you know, not divorced, and so that means there's still hope, and everybody who gets divorced, you know, not everybody, but the large majority, that's not what they ever wanted you know, they, they they worked, they tried to to make their marriage work. You know, but for whatever reason, it it they it, 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 it didn't work. But it's not like they just gave up. You know, easily and didn't fight for their marriage and and so forth. Um, but they they just reached a limit, and I know about reaching limits. Okay, you know, and some people I marvel at how long they stayed together in light of what one was putting up with, you know, and so forth, or both were putting up with, for, for, the, for that matter. But, okay, so that's just my introduction now. So what, what do you do? Well, let me show you a little more grace here. Um, your marriage is in trouble, but obviously at one time it wasn't in trouble, like when you first got married, right? You were in love, and your relationship was great. You were on cloud nine. That's why you said, I do. That's why you went through that marriage ceremony. And, 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 and you know, initially, at least, it was mostly a blessing. Now, th- something might have surfaced very early on. But I'm just trying to say, don't be too so hard on yourself in that saying, well, you know, my marriage isn't working out here. Well, it was working out. And that holds the secret uh, as to how you can rescue it now okay because it was working at one time it was maybe maybe you know the the maybe you had trouble from day one of your marriage well obviously but you didn't have much trouble until that day because you 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 married so you must have been in love it must have been a good thing you might be you must have been thinking to yourself this is the right move because i'm happy when i'm with this person and so i want to be with this person the rest of my life And, and so it at one time, if it was only just during the dating or courting stage, it was working. You had a great relationship. But then, you know, quickly, or maybe it was gradually, most times it is gradually, things began to surface. And, and you know, hurdles present themselves. Some selfishness creeps in and words are spoken that are cut to the heart that hurt and and you know and and maybe it's an up and down thing maybe it's you know we we fight and we make up and we you know we're fighting again and we make up or 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 whatever um but anyways now you come to the place well it's in trouble but i'm just wanting to remind you because this this holds the secret of how, how to recover what you had you did have a it was good at one time okay so here's the secret What were you doing then? Do it again. Okay, because during the dating courting phase, you were focused on this relationship and you were, um, you know, devoting time and energy. And I hate to use the word work because it's so much fun, but you know, you're you're considerate and you're thinking of them, you're proving to them how much you love them. You you got your best foot forward, your best face is showing, you know, and you're doing your very best to win that person over to, as we talked about in a previous lesson, to win their love, to deserve their love. They married you because of I didn't marry you in spite of, you know, I don't think I've known anyone who ever married someone. Well, I don't see anything I like about you, but just out of mercy, I'm going to marry you. No, people marry because of something and you've got to recover the because. Now, we all being a combination of, you know, 
spirit and flesh and unselfishness and selfishness we we're, we're tempted to blame it on the other person and wait for them to do what's right but you, you know that's actually the wrong strategy um, whether you're the husband or the wife it's the wrong strategy the right strategy is to take the upper ground right and 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 make a sacrifice and do something to gain that other person's admiration whatever you want to call it love respect by serving them and being unselfish so i'm going to put you first and that then will reverse that vicious cycle the downward spiral of selfishness that you know i always say that's you know the the the, the marriage made in hell that reverses that downward spiral and it starts it gradually going back up again because i don't care if you're married to the wicked witch of the west or frankenstein if you love that wicked witch if you love that monster you know uh, you know on a, on a i was going to say unconditionally but i i, I want to be careful in using that word but if you love them you know in spite of what they've said to you what they've done to you and you know show them that kind of love that christ demonstrated for us the, that i love you in spite of what, all that's happened and and i'm gonna s strive to for your happiness if you if you if you can stay consistent for that for a long enough time then there's a good chance not guaranteed now not guaranteed but there's a good chance that it, it's like the bible says you know when you love your enemies it's like pouring burning coals on their heads so you shame them okay and when they see that you're making the effort and that you're trying to please them and make them happy that has a tendency of making them want to reciprocate to you and you can get on that upward circle where every day is I, i'm just trying to please you and i want to know what makes you happy and i that's what i want to do that's what i want to be and so uh, on our last little lesson if you didn't see that i encourage you because that was titled 14 words to you know fix or upgrade your your marriage and basically what i'm advocating there is saying to your spouse giving them a chance to communicate what could I do for you today that would show you how much I love you, how, how I really do love you? What can I do? Because actions speak so much louder than words. You can say I love you, but you need to do it. And then you've got to get an answer from them because you, you want some concrete step, something that you can actually do that day that will send a message to them, I really love you. And... You know if you can't get an answer from them well then you know you just have to gently keep asking uh because if they don't answer it's obviously because they're afraid to answer or, or they're afraid you know they're already feeling condemned because <laughs> they know that well if you're going to say that to me i should be saying that to you too well yeah buddy <laughs> you should but sometimes it takes a while to you know sink into those boneheads and uh so you can you do it for you know every morning for a week and golly you know even frankenstein is going to get the message and feel a little conviction that oh my goodness i should be reciprocating because every morning this woman asks me what can i do and i tell her and then she does it and so maybe i should like get my act together here and ask her well what can i do today that would prove my love for you okay and you know husbands and wives they have um you know different needs god made us men and women differently and so forth there's a great book that's become a classic for uh to, to help marriages called his needs her needs 
by a guy named Harley. It's been out for, oh my goodness, two decades now. But he actually had a, he's a psychologist who did counseling, and I guess still does counseling, marital counseling, for years and years. And, you know, through, uh, really, not, I don't want to say trial and error, but, you know, he what he was advising couples wasn't working. And so then he began to ask questions himself and research. And you know, by interviewing and counseling thousands of couples uh, and surveying them, he came up with generally the five major needs that, that husbands, men have, and the five major needs that wives have. Now, they're general because there's you know, differentiation among men, there's differentiation among women. But in general, he came up with the five needs. These are the expectations. These are the things that husbands are looking for in marriage. And then the five things that wives are looking for. And, and if, you, if you were to summarize all of them, it's like stuff that everybody did when they were dating. <laughs> so if you do those things, um, it, it, you know, because that's what, that's what got you together. That's what got the relationship going. And so that's what you need to get back to. And so if you get a copy of that book, His Needs, Her Needs, um, and even maybe as a couple, read it together. And it's really neat because in the book, of course, he goes back and forth, you know, to him and then to her and, and shows how they feed off each other. You know, like one of the needs of men was sexual fulfillment. And I think that might have been the greatest need, the number one need, you know, expressed by most men in marriage. And, and the, the greatest need for women was... Um, you know, in intimate and transparent uh, conversation, I think, was up there. If that wasn't number one, it was it was number two. Oh, no, no, it was affection. It was affection. Number two was like, you know, meaningful, intimate conversation. But Harley talks about how the husband that does those things shows his wife affection. Not sex, buddy. Affection. There's a, there's a difference, okay? Shows her every day how much he cares in many different ways, you know, sending her that continual message that he's much more likely to get his need, his number one need, met, okay? And vice versa, if she shows him, you know, and that she's interested in meeting his number one need, he's more interested in meeting her. So it's, it, it, it you know, it, it all plays off each other. And he and does a great job showing in his book how that actually uh, works. Okay, so, and, and, it's worked for a lot of people who have read his book or who've just simply applied the 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 principles uh, that are outlined in that book. So I would encourage you to get a copy of His Needs, Her Needs, if your marriage is in trouble, and read it with your spouse. Okay, and a lot of marriages that were in trouble have been saved by by people reading and then applying what was in that book, understanding here's what you're looking for and so i'm gonna work to unselfishly give you what you need and it's gonna come back to me in in in, in getting what what i need and 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 again these needs are not selfish it's not selfish for a man to desire to have a sexual a fulfilling sexual relationship with his wife that's how god made him in fact i think in his needs her needs you know he, he compares it to the need for air and and water <laughs> you know it's such a fundamental basic need that uh that men have and and, and this is the same thing her, her need for affection and so forth this is not selfish this is just how god made us there's a difference between selfishness which always comes at the expense of someone else and and self-interest which is just simply you know making sure that the, the, the basic God-given desires and needs that are that are not sinful, that are legitimate, are, are met. You know, is it sinful for you to eat lunch today? No, it's you know you're taking care of yourself. It's not selfish. Now, if uh, there's you know two cookies there on the plate and you're having a meal with somebody else and you grab both cookies, you know that that could very well be in the category of selfishness because there was two cookies. Both of you could have had one cookie, right? Uh, so that's at the expense of someone else that you got the two cookies. But it wouldn't be wrong for you to eat the one cookie. And um, yeah, okay. So so a lot of times, you know, there's this very unbalanced teaching that I hear uh, that where 
where preachers even categorize the meeting of the desire to have basic needs met as selfishness. You know, and it's 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 a little bit off balance. Okay, so I recognize I want to know what makes my wife happy so I can make her happy. And I know that I'll benefit from that because as I said on my previous little lesson, you know, you hear that saying sometimes, when mama's happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> and that is funny, but there's an element of real truth in that. And it's not just with mama, it's with any relationship. If, if the person I'm in a relationship are happy, it kicks back and bounces back to me. I'm happy because I love seeing them happy. I love making them happy. And when they see how much I love them, they love me back. I, you know, get points, whatever you want to call it. I merit their, their, their love and so forth. And it becomes not this vicious downward cycle of selfishness. It becomes this lovely heavenly, you know, rapture up to heaven of unselfishness without getting into that ditch of saying, well, we have to, you know, deny ourselves and anything you want is wrong. And, you know, that, that kind of nonsense. All right. All right. Well, that's enough on that. It's been a great week here on Little Lessons to be talking about marriage. And, um, you know, you could earn some love <laughs> from me by saying nice things <laughs> in those comments. I don't read the comments because there's too many nasty ones. And so we have someone on our staff who kind of filters them and sends me the nice ones. Why? Because, hey, here's a little insight. I like to be loved. Do you like to be loved? Everybody likes to be loved. And why perfect strangers who I have no idea who you are, uh, what satisfaction do you get out of writing nasty comments? You need to go back and take human being 101, okay? Get rid of those nasty comments, you know. And, and pe people that go, oh, I'm going to click the thumbs down on this one. What are you accomplishing? Oh, way to go. You sent a message. Well, you know, do you like getting the thumbs downs? No. So, so if you don't like it, just don't say anything. Don't, don't, don't do the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Don't do anything. Just go on. <laughs> you know. If you, if, again, I should give a little lesson on this, what this reveals about people that always have to, you know, put the thumbs down or write some, you know, contradictory point because, you know, you're not right. Well, just go on. You don't, you don't have to comment at all. Like your mother taught you. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say it at all. That's, that's great. That's a, that's a great attitude. It's the right attitude to have. What do you accomplish by criticizing strangers? What are you hoping to accomplish, honestly? Okay, and so probably you're failing at all your other relationships. If you have any relationships, who wants to be around you? You know, Mr. or Mrs. Negatron. Find fault finder. How about some love? You know, bet you you like to be loved, right? Okay, so so spread a little love in your in your YouTube comments. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, it's so good to be with you. And uh, if you've never been to our website, heavensfamily.org, that's a way that you can show love, prove love, send love by helping the people that Jesus called the least of these. And that's really what Heaven's Family is all about. We've been doing it for almost 20 years now, all over the world. And... Um, you know, it's a way to prove your love for Jesus. It's a way to, you know, show him that you really love him because that's what he said. When you care for the least of these, you're, you're doing it for me. So, Heaven's Family, very important ministry. Um, and we're so thankful for everybody who's involved and for the Lord's blessing upon it. Okay, until next time, may the Lord bless you.